Hey folks, good morning. Uh, I wouldn't say the long awaited because we only actually announced this the other day, but uh, that's all you're gonna get today. Um, a Honda Civic. <laughs> no, no, um, a very good morning and warm welcome to uh, London Heathrow folks. We are here um, waiting for EK1 to arrive. She's around about 17 minutes out, 15 minutes out, something like that. We're at the stand um, and we are um, honoured to be here, obviously, today to um, cover the turnaround of uh, this e A380 with Emirates Airlines. And with me, um, I'm honoured also to say, in the back there, we got Ryan. Uh, he's from Red Agency, looking after Emirates Airlines uh, here in the UK. Uh, Omar is uh, in the driving seat right there. He's the uh, senior airport service agent with Emirates Airlines and uh, standing right there. Give us a wave, Imran. Uh, the Emirates station manager. These guys are looking after us. Now, what we're waiting for at the moment is a um, is a, our follow me car uh, with Heathrow Airport um, because we're not at this point in time able to uh, to move. Uh, we are planning, obviously, as you can see, if you're here in the southern UK or anywhere uh, in the UK that is um, uh, having some serious issues with visibility in terms of fog. Of course, these aircraft have no such issue at all. Um, it is, but uh, great thing is the aircraft is uh, more or less on time. And uh, we have in the past um, managed to catch, um, and it happens quite often, I have to be honest with you, um, we have caught Emirates A380 um, landing uh, whilst the other one is rolling on for departure. Uh, that is how um, uh, precise these guys at Emirates, and to be honest with you, any airline would want to have a quick turnaround like that. Um, but um, Emirates are very, very specific about wanting to be on time. Uh, Chili, do you have that video ready to play out? Okay, um, we're just going to show you this one quickly, folks, because this is um, this is a uh, this is a, a, a great little video that we managed to catch um, a couple of years ago, I think it was, or about a year ago, whenever it was. Okay, run VTGP. Oh, look at this! How synchronised our Emirates, man! Look at this. Be an early rotate. I have a funny feeling this could go up quite early. Yeah, look at that. Look at the vortex over the wing, man. Look at that. Created by the uh, vortex generators on the uh, on the on the uh, engine cows. Go, folks um, what a because of the fact that we film here so regularly at London Heathrow we do see that quite often um, but that was massively precise as well uh, the um, the other aircraft that was here uh, on stand uh, has since gone and by the look of that is that blue skies can we see blue skies uh, we are actually just waiting for the um, for the field air, uh, uh, um, car the escort vehicle vehicle to uh, take us out onto the field and of course um, this is uh, this is kind of a dual operation in fact in terms of um, Emirates Airlines and Donata working together um, global operation with Donata of course I think they're based actually are their their, their their main head office 
is based out in Dubai and that's something that we're going to be covering a little bit later on um, but these guys at London Heathrow looking after um, Emirates for their turnaround uh, specifically today and we're going to be meeting up with uh, Stuart Angles, Angus who's the regional CEO at Donata he's going to be explaining a little bit more about the operations here but what we're primarily looking at is the cargo handling as well as the um, the luggage the passenger luggage handling operations of course um, the A380 um, still has um, uh, some uh, amount of, of, of a cargo capacity um, where even when she's got a full um, a full passenger um, load so to speak um, I think it's around about is it 14 tons or something like that that she can she can still carry uh, we'll talk about some amazing um, A380 factoids a little bit later on. Um, but uh, like I say, she still does have uh, the, cap the capability and the capacity uh, to, to uh, squeeze a little bit of freight in with her. Um, and what we need to appreciate as well uh, here at, uh, at London Heathrow are the folks that work uh, for Donata. And we've... Um, we've uh, we filmed them and documented them many, many times uh, in terms of the fact that they are all weather. Oh, uh, they are all weather workers. These uh, guys and girls at Donata got a lot of um, a lot of them who uh, who watch the show as well and um, uh, are, are so happy to be working for the for the company, especially those who love their aviation as well. Okay, looks like we've got uh, she's in the Lambourne hold. Okay, so we've got to get out there pretty quick. We're going to meet up with these fellas, these folks now. Hi there. Hi, I'm Stuart. Nice to meet you, Stuart. Nice to meet you, Joe. Oh, you're How are you? Stuart. Uh, you're with uh, Donata. Yes. yes. That's okay. Right. I was yeah, just yeah, mentioning yeah. you. Thank you yeah. very much indeed for coming yeah, out. No, it's great Appreciate to meet it. You. Hello, sir. Hey, I'm How you doing? I'm from Donata. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, you. Here's the and heat vehicle. Uh, let's get going. So okay. Yeah. yeah we so need to right. get going. So we'll be oh, back. I nearly shook your hand. Hello, mate. How you doing? Good to see you, man. Right. We're going to get out onto the field, and we'll see you back here in a little bit. Cheers, guys. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that's Stuart there. Okay, is he, uh... Yeah, we're still waiting. She's in the Lambourne hold at the moment, so we kind of need to, uh... Let's just hope this, uh... Oh. Is this... Can you put this window down, Omar? Yeah, sir. Perfect. Thanks, mate. Okay, so I'm going to back in. Yeah. <laughs> Here he comes now, right, okay. Okay, GP, now it's all about signal. <laughs> See those, um, those big units up there, folks? They are uh, air conditioning units. So when the aircraft's on the ground, and um, even with the APU running, they run those uh, air conditioning units. A lot of airports now using uh, solar powered systems, which is good because obviously most airports around the world are now uh, reaching for that uh, eco friendly footprint. So, any, uh, any comments on that, folks? Please talk amongst yourselves and uh, a very big warm welcome to all of our good. members. We're all good to go, sir. Morning. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm all right, sir. Okay, uh, so what we're looking for is potentially you're live, by the way. Am I? What we're looking for, live, uh, uh, potentially is um, after it's touched down to be sort of like three, four hundred yards after it's touched down. So he's on the reverses as he's coming towards us. No, that's fine. Are we good? Yep, that's fine. Follow you out there, then. Lovely. Good yeah, man. Perfect. Cheers. All right. all right. Okay, here we go. Good lad. He's gonna have a very proud mum and dad or girlfriend or wife or kids or whatever. That's good. So Imran, you were saying that um, because of the, um, the, the the demand at the moment, there's a there's a potential possibly for a, for, a, for a seventh service to say. Was it with with, with with Emirates coming into Heathrow? 
on a, on a daily basis. How many are they running at the moment? They're running six at the moment. Yeah. The yeah. Okay, okay. But that's an incredible amount yeah. of, of big aircraft, isn't it? Okay, we're moving, GP. We're moving. And I'm guessing that's not just because it's such a popular destination in terms of like tourism, but also from the point of view of, of the fact that it's also a hub for, 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 for um, transferring. Would, you, would, would that be right in saying that? If, 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 there, if there are people going long haul from, say, here to um, Australia yes. and they stop halfway in yes. Dubai. Yes, certainly. Dubai is a beautiful place as it is, so a lot of yep. our customers do want to stop in Dubai. Yeah. But certainly, uh, going further afield is also favourable. So Australia, uh, into Asia, India, Pakistan, into Africa. So yes. We, we fly, we fly the world. So you know, wherever our customers want to go, we'll take them. But, Crazy uh, amount of destinations as well, man. Yeah, it certainly is. Certainly is. Yeah. But at the moment, you know, it's half term, half term holidays, so people want to enjoy the sunshine in Dubai. Yeah. Exactly. Especially when you're uh, here at London like this today, <laughs> where it's pea soup. Um, but definitely there is uh, there is some clearance in terms of the uh, of the weather, the ceiling. I'm hoping. Certainly by the time we um, by the time we uh, approach the departure time, I'd imagine we should have clear skies. Hopefully. <laughs> Always the optimist. Glass half full. We have, look at this, the aviation gods have answered our prayers. We have clarity. Oh, this could be good. Yeah, it has. So that is what we need to do. EK1, we need to get it to number one. Flight Radar 24. Let's do our stuff as we always do. And um, also, by the way, folks, just uh, be prepared because next week we are going to be live from Dubai as well. Uh, the Pilot Flight Training Academy 
is going to be one of our main focusing points. Um, also, we're going to be discussing the fact that uh, obviously globally there is uh, an issue with a pilot shortage, um, partially down to COVID, but also down to uh, a lot of pilots reaching retirement age, um, just like the old man did. And uh, of course, they're going to need more pilots to fill the seats so that these uh, guys can continue their high capacity routes. Um, and with, uh, with the, the fact that you can literally um, upgrade, so to speak, or type rate from uh, an A318 <laughs> to an A380 in the space of a, a, a very short space of time, um, it's, uh, it's a very easy thing to do. So if you're, uh, if you're an A3, um, A318, 319, 320 pilot um, sitting there wondering about uh, the future of uh, your career in terms of where you want to go, uh, you might want to think about uh, the fantastic options you have with Emirates Airlines in terms of uh, going and flying with them being based out in Dubai. Uh, we'll also talk about other places that you can obviously don't have to be delayed, uh, uh, um, uh, stationed in Dubai. Uh, there are pilots who are stationed all around the world with Emirates Airlines. Oh, this guy's really looking after us, mate. Okay, we're going to have to, yeah, yeah, we've got two of them here as well. I wonder if Airside, is it Airside Ian or something who does the, who's on the, it is Airside Ian, I wonder if he's here. Okay, right, we got two of them here. Okay, folks, well, we are, uh, this is probably going to be the most ultimate uh, London Heathrow air. Okay, yep. So Ryan, do you think we might switch you to planes today by the end of today? Yeah, the big steam trains. Essentially, yeah, yeah. I know you'd rather see the um, what is it? The the, the um, flying Scotsman. The flying Scotsman going ha hammering down two seven right, but um, <laughs> doot, doot. but yeah, we might just get you into planes today when we see this uh, three eighty touchdown. Joe, are you happy with the uh, turnaround in weather? Oh, I'm very good, happy, yeah. Omar. I'm very happy. Fantastic. Um, Beautiful sun. We are very, very fortunate. And we'll get the rollout as well for a certain <laughs> length of time. If we ever get out the car, that is. Oh, yeah. We're just waiting for the thumbs up. Does he know that we're waiting for the thumbs up? Um. <laughs> I don't know if they knew that we were waiting. Are we good to disembark? Yeah, Okay, right, well, let's get a set of sticks. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Right, let's just grab these. And then... That. Sure. So she's just turning on the finals now. So 
over here. Okay, folks, she is on finals. You say she's on finals, GP. Yeah? Audio check, audio check. Stand by. Now, as well as uh, Stuart Angus, um, who is your uh, regional CEO at Donata, we have Captain Sean Croft. Now, we're going to be meeting up with him later. We've got some beautiful plumage, man. I'm sure they wouldn't mind us filming this, would they? Just... Wow. Oh, yeah, I know, man. I know, I know. It's this. This is it. Yeah. He's brought us right out to the right point. Let's give the, let's give the uh, ground crew some, uh, some love here. The uh, Ops boys. Give us a wave, fellas. There we go. Happy, happy. We're all happy. What a great job, man. And I've said it so many times before about um, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're wondering about having a job or getting a job um, at an airport, <laughs> you know, seriously, and you've got a driver's license, uh, you're halfway there, aren't you? Okay, so where is she at? Have we got her to number one yet? Okay, folks, let's just get this uh, EK1 to number one on flight radar. Okay, she's number four, but she's more than likely going to be... Come on, come on, forget about all your balloons and your things flying around Canada and everything. Let's just, let's just get it to number one. Yeah. Okay, well, she is currently uh, 160 knots, 2,600 feet passing through. Uh, departed Dubai seven hours, 20 minutes ago. This is a military style operation, folks, uh, that Emirates um, coordinate here at London Heathrow, as well as everywhere else around the world that they fly in and out of. Uh, huge amount of destinations. You should, uh, you should go and check uh, some of the factoids um, with Emirates Airlines, but it is uh, incredible uh, how many places uh, they fly in and out of. And this, don't forget, is one of, believe it or not, 118 um, A380s in the Emirates fleet. And uh, as Imran was explaining just now, because of the, the, um, the demand for Dubai, um, it's, uh, it's such a high capacity route. Uh, that's why I'm guessing that they need the 380s because they are filling these 380s up. So you wouldn't, you'd rather have one 380 flying the route than having two 777s, if you see what I mean. Um, they will be um, swapping up to the A350. Um, they've ordered 50, no fewer than 50 um, A350, I think, I don't know if they're 1000s or 900s, um, but Emirates gonna be uh, the proud owners of the new Airbus A350 in the not too distant future. And uh, of course we will probably um, go out to um, France to document one of those deliveries, I would imagine. So where's she at now, GP? Where's she at now? So she's two out, folks. ever get the chance to fly on one of these 380s uh, obviously the cabin layout and configuration is different with uh, with every airline um, but uh, around about and I think uh, Emirates if you manage if you're if uh, trust me the economy is very very comfortable <laughs> trust me it is because we we normally fly economy um, but obviously you know they've got the uh, the superstar class the first class and um, the business class seating arrangement up the front um, on the top 
but if you do get the chance and if you're at all into engineering or into aviation and you happen to fly out to um, to Dubai then grab seat 53A um, but the best one is 68A uh, no seat in front of it more legroom uh, and you get a window seat so it's a bonus so that's the first one that's in stand here all day and film them and you know what the crazy thing is that we're actually going to be doing that in Dubai folks uh, as it as it stands at the moment uh, no less than four hours of filming uh, at, the, at, the, at the runway's edge in Dubai next week okay we're gonna quickly unhitch and uh, make our way back to the gate uh, where we're gonna get the waves etc etc okay. unhitch that one now drop that goes there that goes there you can Probably, yeah, that's good, that's good. Okay. We're all good. Same thing, then. Thanks, fellas! Wow, what a touchdown. Oh, my goodness me. We did get the million dollar shot, man. We certainly did. Um, but what's also beautiful is the, uh, is the pressure over the wing. Yes. The, the fluff that you get is just uh, fantastic. Um, oh. Chat's gone mental. It was a beautiful landing. Man. I bet you've been dreaming about that all night, haven't they? did Air France a little bit further down right. for the departure once. Um, I hope we're going to catch this up because he's taxiing pretty quick, isn't he? And uh, we need to get him turning in so that we can get away from Sean. Captain Sean Craft in the left-hand seat. Find out what... Uh, Sean's um, rise to uh, captain. The story got some great stories of pilots. Um, one in particular, my um, my niece's husband, who's an Emirates uh, seen SFO uh, stationed out in Dubai, and ironically, she's uh, she's up there with Denard as well. She basically runs the safety division of Denard. So, uh, but uh, he was literally um, working a bird king at one point. And uh, yeah, 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 he wanted to fly and his, and his um, I think it was his uh, grandmother or his aunt or uh, she remortgaged the house. I'm get, hope I'm getting this all right. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, and he, and he, uh, yeah, and he, and he, and he went and flew for, he went and flew for, for, for EasyJet. And then um, got the opportunity to fly with Emma. And, and now he's gone from the 318 to, uh, it's basically like uh, driving a Mini up to a 40 foot, you know, big tug truck.
Yeah, yeah, we were lucky. We were very lucky. So it's clearing north to south, isn't it? Always seem to be a happy crew, don't they, the guys? Okay, it's back on the right. Do you want to flip back, mate? Uh, no. One side. Good. Okay, now flip these. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, what? Oh, Jilly, I can't do that now. I'm two minutes. I'm two seconds away. I, I can't. I can't reboot it, mate. I can't reboot it, mate. I can't reboot it. He's here. It's right here. Mate.
Okay, mic check, GP, mic check. Okay, we're gonna call, um, Stand by. All good, GP. All good. Oh man, I, 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 I've got the backpack on me back, mate. I've got the backpack on me back. I just. I don't know. Stand by, stand by, just stand by. Stand by, just stand by. Just stand by. <laughs> it's just reach in my pocket and grab it. <laughs> just like, stand by. Okay, 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 okay. Stand by, stand by. Okay, do you want me to reboot it now? Do you want me to reboot it now? Okay. I mean, as far as I was concerned, the modem was on. It's not coming on, mate. Bear in mind is that everything's coming off off, off, off of the right hand side of the aircraft. So I want to get to. Right, it's on, it's on, the modem's on, mate, the modem's on, mate, the modem's on, the modem's on. Right, stand by. That is, that is, um, right, okay. Yep, I'm just going to jump to him now. We're just setting up. We're just confirming every all the. Mate, in the back of the in the back of the car, yeah. there's a headset. There should be a headset. There. Okay. Oh, actually, hold on, I've got it here. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Stand by, Teddy. Going to cut you off and put you on the other headset. Did you copy? Chilly. 
Chili Chili Coffee. Yeah. Okay. We're good. We're good. Right. Okay. Okay, folks. My apologies. So uh, we were just setting up the. Uh, right, um, Stuart. Can yeah. I just pop this on you? Yeah. Okay, just going to do yeah. a uh, right. So, okay, folks. Um, One full schedule departure. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, folks. Uh, may I introduce to you Stuart Angus? Uh, Stuart, regional CEO at Donata. Great to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, tell us a little about what's going on here. Well, thanks for coming down, Jerry. So the aircraft came on to stand about eight minutes ago. We've got another one hour 40 to departure. Uh, you'll see up on the stand guidance system, there's a little clock saying how long the crew have got before. I don't think you can actually see it from here. It's around the other side of the aircraft. I've got you. We'll have a look yeah. around there yeah. in a minute. Yes. And that's telling the crew how long they've got to turn around the aircraft. So we're just offloading now. There's 370 passengers on this flight. There are 480 bags um, to come off and there's 12 tons of cargo. So we've got a team of seven people offloading at the moment. Um, but in total, there's probably about 50 people on the airport involved in turning around this aircraft from wow. the guys preparing the meals um, through the guys building up the cargo, bringing the cargo here from the, the, the cargo facility. And then this is where at the sharp end, you've got the seven guys loading and unloading the flight. Yeah, so it literally is a military style operation, is it not? It is, and it's a very complex operation, but it looks very calm. And the reason it looks calm is these guys know what they're doing. These are professionals. They've been in the industry a long time. They're under supervision of a great supervisor, John, today. Um, they're following very tried and tested um, SOPs, operating procedures, which have been fully risk assessed. So these guys know what they're doing. Um, and it's something they do day in, day out. It's a lovely day today. They do this in all sorts of conditions. Yeah, I was actually going to say that the, um, uh, the conditions are ideal right now, but yeah. there are so many, especially here in the UK, um, situations where the weather's horrendous. High winds, so you're, tack you're battling high winds, but also rain. It's an all-weather operation though, isn't it? They don't just run indoors when it rains. It's no, like... no, it's... it's, it's... Well, you know what it's like, every type of weather here from, you know, a few weeks ago we had snow, um, soon the guys will have their shorts on and we'll be bringing out water every 30 minutes to keep them hydrated in the heat. Wow, that's incredible, that's incredible. Yeah. I noticed that you've got the catering trucks in yeah. the background there. You're also, uh, you also do the, you've got a lot of uh, services that you guys at Donata well, offer. Well, Donata is quite unique in that it does both the ground handling side and the cargo side, but also the catering too, as well. So that's right, so outbound we've got 450 passengers today. Um, that means 900 meals, plus all the extras as well, and all the dry ice and all that stuff. So those guys will be bringing, the catering meals will all have been prepared now. So they're being brought out um, as we speak to the aircraft. So we, um, we played a little video out earlier on because I was, um, I was, um, can you just, uh stand here yeah that's yeah. good that's good thanks yeah. uh i was just um we, we played a, a video out earlier on with um with an uh, emirates a380 touching down and another one taxiing out to go out so yeah. it was like that that crossover was was quite amazing and we've yeah. seen that quite a few times yeah because more often than not there's normally two a380s sitting here at gate isn't there so what's the deal when you've got uh when you've got two arriving or or being at the same place at the same time you have to coordinate that well the stand allocation is quite a complex business and it, and it usually works but the reality is there are some times when an aircraft has to wait off stand because particularly when you've got difficult weather in fact you may have i mean it's it's turning out to be a beautiful day now yeah. but you'll still notice that at the holding point for for the the left hand takeoff runway today to eight left there, you know, there's, there's, there's a queue of about 10 aircraft because they're all being delayed because yes. of the fog this morning. Yes, more so the outbound stuff than the, than the inbound stuff, but that all, yeah. all has a big knock-on effect, doesn't it, with, uh, yeah. with, with operations at an airport per yeah. se, doesn't it? Well, they all say in the military, don't they, that, the, that you prepare plans, but the plans never last beyond the first contact. Exactly. And I, I feel like working at an airport is sometimes like that. You, you, you plan for the day, and you continually adjust. So we've got a team 
in Terminal 3 here are planners who are constantly adjusting because an aircraft's coming in late, um, you know, the bad weather or something, and you're always adjusting the, the allocation of staff as best you can. Yeah. Should we, uh, should we take a little walk under the aircraft and yeah, we can great. go and see around the other side? Yeah. I'm just going to leave that there, those guys, thanks. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, um, I see, I think this is, uh, this is one of the engineering team, is it, maybe? Yes, yeah, so that'll doing be a Emirates walk around. Engineering checking the aircraft. Yeah. You'll, yeah. You'll, you'll have the pilot who will do his own check later, always does that before departure. On the port side of the aircraft, the left side of the aircraft, you have obviously the passengers coming in through the aerobridge, um, but you also have the catering is done from the left-hand side. Um, and also, at some point, the refueling will be done. You see the hydrant um, um, pits here as well. Yes. Most of the Donata work, well, Donata catering is on the left, but the actual loading and unloading is on the right-hand side. Yeah, let's go and, and take a look at that. that's simply to avoid congestion. Of course, you know? yeah, yeah. And again, <laughs> to keep it running smoothly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, Donata is a massive organisation, isn't it? We, I literally see you guys everywhere yeah. where I fly. We, we, we have operations at 88 airports, which, you know, we talk about the complexity around this flight. We are handling a flight, either landing or departing. Should we just move around? Every 30 seconds, somewhere in the world. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. That's really impressive. Yeah. Is yeah. Dubai the main hub, your main, well, your aim? Dubai is the, the biggest operation. We've got a big operation here. Um, we've got uh, big operations in Singapore, Switzerland, USA, Brazil, various other places, Australia. So, wow. Yeah. Big airports and little ones. Yes, yes. And I was going to say that, you know, I mean, uh, we're looking at an A380, yeah. the largest passenger commercial jetliner. Yeah. Um, but you also obviously cater for the smaller um, yeah. regional airlines but or. The, the smallest aircraft we operate here is an A320. Right. Um, but in other places today, we'll be handling ATRs, Dash 8s, uh, Beach 1900, I think, is the smallest that we, we right. handle. Right, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. But, but yeah. again, uh, the same focus and attention goes into even the smallest it's aircraft right the way through to the big it's one. The, obviously, the process is different, but, the, but actually it's the same in terms of the planning that goes in, um, the training that goes in it has to be the same for every aircraft yeah 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 and yeah. that is a, that is a critical part of the of the operation yeah. is it not in terms of uh, uh, training uh, these guys up and uh, and, yeah. and I mean what is the what is the sort of like if somebody wanted to become a come and become a loader yeah. um, what's the sort of like procedure for them uh, in terms of uh, well, applying? it would be, be, be typically um, six to eight weeks training including on the job training so there is safety training, um, then on the, uh, you know classroom training, then on the job training as well, um, and they would typically start maybe sort of loading and unloading, and then and then move on to be an equipment operator. Right. Okay. So it's, it's relatively quick then. You know, a couple relatively of months quick. you could be airside really yeah, after yeah, all the schooling and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. So yeah, it's just safety yeah. checks and and all of that airside security and yes, uh, all those all, sorts of all, all of that. Exactly. Wow, yeah. That's amazing. So everyone here has has done very rigorous airside safety training. Yes, so yes. You've got pretty big bits of metal here. Absolutely, and lots of things to trip over <laughs> as well. Uh, absolutely. Should we have a walk around yeah, there? Yeah, just, uh... around. Uh, be careful here, Jerry. Yeah. So this is the, um, do you want me to explain some of the things going you on? You just carry on yeah, talking, so sir. You'll see this yellow piece of equipment here is the um, fixed power ground. So what this is, is um, it supplies power to the aircraft. Yes. when it stops so that the aircraft doesn't have to keep its own power going. Yes. So from a sustainability perspective, that's really important. Yes, of course, um, because that would burn a lot of fuel. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so this just uses power from the airport, which is yes. far more efficient. Um, yes, most definitely. You're, the, this piece of here, equipment here is a um, uh, lower deck loader. Um, which okay. Is being, we're, still in, we're still offloading at the moment. Yep. As I mentioned, there's 480 bags coming off this aircraft. Yes. So they they will come out. The aircraft itself has a automated electric system. So the guys are not pushing it. Yeah, there's a, there's, yeah. there's little um, uh, like a little joysticks and That's stuff right. like that on the yeah yes. yeah yeah. So that um, the the PDU. So the 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 bag the the cans come out of there. They're loaded onto um, this loader. The loader comes down. And then they're transferred onto um, 
uh, baggage track or to dollies yeah. Yeah. and they're taken by tractors into the bag hall. Yeah, so, so first priority obviously passengers coming off and then the bags. Yes. And yes. then you'll see waiting here, this, this Mercedes truck yeah. is actually the cargo. Okay. But we're waiting to get the bags off before we start getting the cargo, priorities it's priorities. for the passengers. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, exactly. And I'm guessing the um, somebody with a with a well, I wouldn't say with a, a, a back complaint or a back issue or in in terms of, but the the the, the, the manual labour side of it is, has been really uh, not eradicated but reduced quite substantially because of the automation with the moving of the cans around exactly. the aircraft. And, so if, yeah, that's right. So the movement of the, the cans in the aircraft and out here is all automated. I yeah. mean, sometimes it needs a bit of a shove. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> but they're on casters, aren't they? But so it's all casters. very, very easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's, yeah. It's, so anyone could do it. You don't, yeah. you don't have to be physically very strong to do it. Yes, but, it, yes. but I'd say it's a job which keeps you fit. Yeah, almost because definitely. Because you're moving around, you're, you know, you're moving from one stand to another, you, you're walking around the aircraft. So you can see the first, one of these, these cans coming out now. So that's so being moved an from the inside, here. yeah. Yeah, yeah this, this guy operating the, the lower deck loader, yeah. um, he's got a joystick. Uh, it's like a video game. Yes, most Except definitely. It's real. It's real. Yeah, and yeah. So he's, he's, um, he'll be bringing probably three carts out onto here, three cans out onto here, and, um, and then they'll go away to the bank. Now you've the, seen the first set of, of cans has come off already. Yes. All being well, those would have been the first business class. Uh, bags. Yes, the because priority. they should have been yep. loaded in a way that they come off first. Yes, yes, most definitely. And the great thing is, is with modern day technology um, in terms of uh, barcoding and so on and so forth, yeah. um, the, the, the traceability of even one bag within those cans Absolutely. Uh, for one passenger. We had a we had an instance in um, in um, Munich where they were, they, before the aircraft went out, they had to take some cans off to take one suitcase off, yes. but it delayed the whole flight, yes. of course, you know. Um, but for them to be able to allocate and find that bag yeah. Yeah. was very, very quick, yeah. because of the, because they know what can it's on, exactly. and then uh, yeah. almost, yeah. not so much where it's placed within that can, yeah. but by using the barcode system. Exactly, and that becomes really important, for example, on departure, you may find there's, some passengers don't make it to the gate for whatever reason. Yes. And yes. in that case, you're offloading their bags. Yes. And then it's a race against time to get those bags off before you delay the aircraft. Absolutely. So you need to know exactly which can they're in. Yes. So you can get them off. Yes. And that's yeah. the beauty of, 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 exactly. of modern day technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So look how high up that that uh, catering truck. That's crazy, yeah, yeah. Man. That's the upper deck. The upper deck. That's yeah. unique to the uh, A380, of course. That yes. Upper deck catering, yes. Which is actually uh, over the wing. Yeah, that's yeah, maximising yeah. that K-lift uh, yeah. uh, operation, isn't it? It's, it's just exactly, such yeah. a huge aircraft, isn't yeah. it? And of course, those scissor lifts. Yeah. On the that catering have been very specifically designed for the A380. Yes. Because it's effectively a double scissor. Yes. It's, oh right, I see. Yeah. 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 You know, it's much higher than a, a normal normal aircraft. And yes. pe people refer to the A380 as a double decker. Well, it's not. You can see from here, it's a triple decker. Right, yes, of course, you know, because I, you've got the, the yeah. lower deck for the cargo yeah. and, the, yeah, and, the, right. and the cans. Yeah, it yeah. is a triple decker, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And remember, of course, on the A380, because you've got more passengers than any other aircraft, you've got more bags. Absolutely, which yeah. Which means often you've got less room for cargo. Well, I think the... Um, I think initially when, um, uh, when when the A380 was introduced, I think they had um, concerns about the fact that um, I think Qantas at one point were actually uh, flying a 747 behind their 380 <laughs> yeah. with the passengers, a lot right. of passengers freight on board. <laughs> yeah. Well, thankfully we haven't had that. Oh, we've got the captain over there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Listen, I'm going to come back to you in a little while. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If I can grab that mic, yeah. um, and then we will uh, we will talk again shortly. Okay. But we, yeah, no don't worries. go anywhere. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, GP. We're going to uh, we're going to go and meet the captain, Captain Sean Croft, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, he looks a bit like Zane Dunning, doesn't he? <laughs> Not Zane Dunning in disguise, is it? Sean, how are, how are you doing? Lovely to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Great, uh, great, beautiful landing, by the way. Thank I have you. to say, 
Um, let's get you in the. Uh, let's get you uh, so that we've got some sun on you. There we go. Uh, yeah, there's good. So, how was your flight? Fantastic. Oh, hold on a minute. Let me get your mic. There we go. Okay. There you we right? go. How was your flight, sir? Very good. Um, we're about uh, seven hours, 20 minutes. We brought up uh, 370 people and uh, beautiful, smooth day. Very nice flight. On a high cruise, on a high ceiling height? Yeah, we came up at, uh, started at 32 and ended up at 40,000 feet for the end of the flight. Okay, so smooth. I, fantastic. I, I noticed by your twang, you're, you're not from the UK, no? No, I'm not, I'm from Canada. You're from Canada, yes. fantastic. So yes. how did you come to fly with Emirates? Um, I basically applied to uh, join Emirates. I, I've been at Emirates for uh, 15 years, almost 15 years now. I joined on the uh, uh, Airbus 330 as a first officer and the 340. I was on that fleet for about um, four years and then I transitioned onto the 380 for the better lifestyle. I mean, we only do four trips a month on the 380, so it's a much better lifestyle. Yeah, because there's so many dis destinations. Yes. So you get to literally fly around the world? We literally fly around the world. We fly the biggest airplane to the biggest cities and we get fantastic layovers. Um, Emirates is flying uh, in upwards of 80 380s. We're about 90% of our pre-pandemic level now. So it's it's really one of the best jobs you can have in the world here. Yeah, and it's gonna, apparently it's going up to 90% around about yes, yeah. mid, mid summer. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm it's guessing kind of it's because it's such a high capacity route with Dubai that that they have to have a, a, a big airplane to... They do, they do. This airplane is ideally suited for the hub and spoke system that Dubai operates in. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's running very profitable right now, I think. So as a, as a kid, take this back to your childhood with, with airplanes. Were you, have you always loved airplanes? How did it come about that you flew? My, uh, my father's a pilot, but not a commercial pilot. He's a private pilot. And um, I was at the, at the hub of deciding what I wanted to do when I grew up after high school. I did one year of university and couldn't decide what I wanted to do. And my dad uh, recommended, why don't you think about aviation as a career, which I'd never thought about. Um, and the following year, I was enrolled in a flying school and building hours. And after that, I, uh, I started teaching. I was teaching for five years, building up hours. Then I went and flew in the bush in Canada for, for about a couple of years. Wow, bush pilot. Bush pilot. Doing, oh, doing man. Air ambulance. Is yes. that Oh, bush pilot, not not the. Oh no, I'm, I'm thinking of crop. Uh, in, the in crop the bush, space. Yeah. But air ambulance. So yeah. Oh, cool. that's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, then onto the regional airlines for uh, ten years, and then I came to Emirates. So very uh, very short career, but. And you flew a beautiful airplane. Ago. Let's face it, the A346. Yeah. That was uh, that was a uh, quite a. Emirates had the 343s. Oh, it's a 43, 43s. Oh, and 345s. Yeah, yes, we didn't have any of course. Yes, yes. Yeah. 345, 346, very sort of like similar in a way, but yeah. same same engines, Trent 5s, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, oh wow, how lucky is that? So, yeah. so when you when it came to uh, Emirates bringing the A380 into their fleet, did you immediately sort of think, oh wow, I want to fly that aeroplane? I did, I did, because I knew to get on that airplane, you're going to be flying the king of the skies. You're going to be able to go places where anybody else can't go. And it, it's a magnificent airplane to fly, it really is. I mean, it handles the same as a 330 and the 340 does until you get on the ground. And then you've got to worry about these big wings. You've got an 80 meter wingspan out there that you have to worry about. And you've got to be careful, you're not going to hit anything once you get on the ground. So in the air, it's all the same. And on the ground, you've then got to be very, very careful you don't run into anything. Yeah, that's crazy, man. You had a, it was a beautiful landing, I've got to say. Everybody loved it, man. But you. when you, I mean, uh, if I was a pilot, I know that when I land on a big aircraft, I would be thinking of the people who are watching me land. Yeah. Uh, did we get them to number one, GP? We're, we're, we're checking, but uh, you know, you were on flight radar uh, as on the approach, yeah. so thousands of people watching you. Yes. And uh, it was a very classy landing, but also the, uh, the, the shot you know, on approach with the with the pressure on the wing yeah, and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. It's fantastic. Now, so do uh, you do you think about that when you're are you are you proud of what you're doing with flying? I'm very proud of what I'm doing. Emirates is one of the one of the best companies to work for. Um, we have we're actively actually recruiting pilots right now. And, and if anyone is interested, um, I recommend you to go to Emirates Careers or sorry, Emirates Group Careers dot com. Have a look at the uh, web page there. I know our recruitment department is actively looking for direct entry captains, 
direct entry first officers, and we also have an accelerated command program as well that we're trying to get people into. There's so much movement in the airline industry right now that, that we're looking for pilots. Yeah, and there is Emirates, a massive shortage. Emirates has got a fantastic package to offer, you know, and it's, it's really a worthwhile company to come and fly. And when you get to fly this thing around the world, I mean, you really can't complain. You're at the top of the food chain. You really are. Yeah, I was, I was actually mentioning on our way out to meet you on the, uh, on the airfield um, that, you know, there could be literally, I mean, we do have so many success stories and stories of pilots who, uh, um, who may be flying for a, a regional airline on a 318. Yeah. Um, the transition from an, an A318 to the 380 is, is, I mean, in terms of the cockpit, there's not yeah. a lot of difference, is there? There's, there's you know? not a lot of difference. There's a couple of extra sticks in the cockpit, and that's about it, really. Yeah. And as I said, it flies. they fly all the same. The Airbus philosophy is all the same on the 319 all the way to the 350 and the 380. So, in fact, um, the 330 and the 340 are, are multi-feet flying airplanes that you can fly both at the same time. Emirates is introducing the 350 next year, and they are entertaining the idea of making the 350 and the 380, possibly a multi-fleet type airplane where you can fly both airplanes in the same week. So That's fantastic. Yeah, that, yeah. The, and like you say, the only difference is the size. Yeah. Literally the, the size. size of it. Yeah, you just right. got to be aware of it when you're on the ground. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, absolutely amazing. And, and, and ironically enough, that's what we are. We are going to be in Dubai next week yeah. um, covering the, uh, the pilot flight training academy. Oh, excellent. Um, so, you know, right the way down from the rookies yeah. all the way up to somebody who's got uh, the, the hours. Uh, who's maybe looking for a swap, a swap in their career? Yeah. I've heard that Emirates, like you say, is a great, a great airline to work with. It is, you know, um, biggest airplane, biggest cities. We live in one of the safest cities in the world. Dubai is a fantastic place to live. Um, we get a tax-free salary. We get free accommodation. We get a health care and dental benefit package. We have an education support allowance for our kids to go to school. When you add all that up and our tax-free salary, you've got one of the best remuneration packages in the industry. You really do, and it's it's you, you can't really beat that anywhere else. And Come at on. the same time, you're flying beautiful airplanes. You do. The, the most beautiful, newest airplanes in the world. You know? Fantastic. Really Sean, amazing. I'm going to let you get on. Sure. It's a been a pleasure. Are you are you are you you're staying or are you flying her out or flying out? We're in uh, London for 24 hours. Yes. And then uh, back to Dubai tomorrow night on the same airplane. And then I've got uh, about five days off and then off to uh, Auckland, New Zealand. Fantastic. It just keeps on Wonderful. going. Wonderful. It just keeps on giving. Yeah. Sir, thank you once again. Appreciate thank you, it. Jared. Let me grab that. Um, and again, thank you. If you need that footage, by the way, let me know and we'll, um, and we'll get that to you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Excellent. All thank the best. You, Take care. Thank Cheers. You. Bye bye. Okay, was that good, GP? Thank you. Okay, fantastic. What a great interview, man. What a great interview. And, and we did get, by the way, Sean, we did get you to number one on Flight Radar. <laughs> number one. Number one, man, number one on FR24. Hello, everybody. Brilliant, man, brilliant. Fantastic. Okay, shall we, um, that was brilliant. That was absolutely fantastic. What a great, uh, what a great in, um, chat. Uh, wouldn't like to say interview. I don't like using the word interview. If you want to carry that, Omar, <laughs> You, it's simple like that. Oh, fantastic. And then um, if you and just hold that bit, I will do just, just touch that. No and problem. then if we do that and oh, that and fantastic. that, and then you let it down. Look at that. All the way down. Perfect. All the way down. Fantastic. And then you can do that. You just make it look too easy. And we, but to be honest with <laughs> you, mate, you can put that back in the car. Oh, you don't need this? Because we don't need this anymore. Oh, no, no. Well, uh, Chili, I might go and work for MX. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is just incredible, man. That is incredible. Right, let's, uh, let's, um, that is just amazing. Where's Stuart? Where did Stuart go? Okay. Uh, hey, look, you know what I, I should do? Um, let me just quickly, let me just quickly. Is the car open? Is the car open? I just want to grab. Oh man, we're going to get some beautiful shots later on, man, of those. Uh, oh, actually, they're in my bleeding finger, aren't they? Hold on a minute. Okay, let's just... Uh... Where's your dead 
my sticker, mate, for you. Oh, right on. Thank Anyone you. Anyone want one? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I promised to tell everyone it was my landing and not the skipper's, though. Oh, was it? Yes. Oh, was it? it was your landing? I'm taking the credit. It's not oh, it was your landing, sir. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful right. man. Thank Absolutely. You Have a good day, yeah. And you, take care. What was your name, sir? Oh, Thomas. Thomas. He's from the UK. Thomas I, is. I couldn't tell, yeah. Are you based here or based in Dubai? No, we're only, we're only based in Dubai. Okay. Um, but uh, I'm from, I used to be based in Gatwick with Thomas. Really? Today, there you go. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thomas, take care. Thomas was flying with Thomas Cook. How about oh, that? Wow. Um, but he was a... Uh, there goes another success story, isn't it? So, uh, wow, based in Dubai now. He used to be flying for Thomas Cook and he landed it. Wow. And look, he's... Uh, Fantastic. Now. Yeah, and he's, now he's flying the big bird. <laughs> wow, how about that? Nice one, Thomas. Oh, he's took all the credit. Sean took all the credit, Jilly. <laughs> GP copy. GP copy. Oh. oh. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Are you about ready to wrap now? Or? No. No? No, we're going, we're carrying on right the way through. Okay. Yeah, is that all right? Um, I think we were, yeah, I mean, in the brief, I think yeah. we, it was just this, I think, but yeah, if you throw letters. Oh yeah, we got to ask, uh, can, you, can you find out? Yeah, and so can we check know. with Heathrow, make sure they're all right with us for going right the way through uh, for the pushback and the departure yes. as yeah, well, because yeah. we can film the departure from here. We yeah, don't yeah. have to go out yeah, to the field. Absolutely. Can you check that for yeah, us? I'll, Thanks, I'll Omar. I think we'd be. Um, I think I might be burnt at the stake if I uh, if I stop now. No, no, you carry on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, mate. That's because I had that on chili, man. I don't know. <laughs> okay, right. We're just putting the uh, putting the word across the Heathrow right now, folks, just to make sure that we're good with. Because uh, I want to. Um, tugs ready isn't that crazy man isn't that crazy that that small little linkage there that little tiny little linkage there for that that's all it takes to push this enormous great big aeroplane back folks oh the countdown clock yeah uh countdown clock uh did it, did it, did it, did it, boo! Where's Carol Vorderman? <laughs> Where's the countdown clock? Oh, that will start with the boarding. Oh, it will start with the boarding, will it? Oh, okay, okay, okay. We're still in our, our 20. Yeah. Our, uh, yeah, 20 again. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to kind of, what we're trying to do at the moment is because uh, I was just saying that, you know, um, we're trying to clear it so that we can stay live for the whole thing right the way through to departure. Yeah. Because I think um, my members might come and drag me and burn me at the stake if I, if I stop now, you know. Because um, ca how can you stop now, man? You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a really good, you're saying some really good comments coming in. Yeah. What's that, sorry? Really good comments coming. Comments are really good. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's all very positive, man, all very yeah, positive. Yeah. But it is great, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, the interview was great. Crazy thing was, the pilot that I was interviewing, he didn't land it. There was, was another he? fella standing in the queue. I'm like, I'm like, you know, and he's like, he's like oh, oh, by the way, I landed it. So, <laughs> so, um, so, so, and his name was Thomas, and he used to fly for Thomas Cook oh, really? at Gatwick. And now he's living the life in Dubai, flying these, man. Can you believe it? What a... But the interview was great with Sean. It was absolutely fantastic. So we got double bubble there, really. But we'll have to uh, try and hook up with, um, with Thomas when we get out to Dubai next week, if okay, he's around. You're coming out to Dubai, aren't you? Yes. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we can carry on. Um, and you can sort of like... Um, Waffle on as much as you like, really. That's the last one coming off, isn't it? Yeah. That's the last. What's that? The freight? Is that what, freight? Or? Yeah. So what? 
so pretty much the offload is pretty much complete now. Passengers are all gone, all the bags are in, and this these are the last uh, last cargo containers coming off now. And in most airports, the cargo comes off on a sort of tractor and, and dollies. Yes. But Heathrow is unique where they use these HGV trucks. And that's because it's such a big airport. Yeah. And the cargo is quite a long way away. It's probably yes. three, four miles away. Yes. By the time they go around the, because they can't go over the runway, they go around. Yeah, because you do have a new uh, freight um, building. Yeah. Uh, you've got a couple here, haven't you? But we've, we've got eight freight facilities wow. at Heathrow. Yeah. Wow, really? Yeah. yeah. We're the biggest um, biggest independent freight uh, warehousing company in the UK on, on airports. Wow, so so when you get a 777 in, for instance, and it's rammed full of freight? Yeah, 20 tonnes, could be yeah. more than 20 tonnes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's coming off here then? Because I believe it's around about anything from 10 to 14 tonnes. Yeah, I think there's the... 12 tonnes on this aircraft came inbound. It was all pretty much general cargo. Um, we often get a lot of pharmaceuticals yes. moved. Um, a lot of perishables, meats, yes. um, seafood, salmon. Uh, obviously, a lot of salmon comes out of the UK, coming out to Dubai. Um, not today, and but that originates often. in Scotland, doesn't it? Yeah, but there's not enough flights out of Scotland for the no, salmon. No, no. So it'll go out of other places too. Um, sometimes, uh, not today, but quite often you get live animals, people moving their pets around the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So often there will be one, one of the holes will be pressurized oh i see yes um so it has proper temperature and and, and air control yeah if, yeah if you have live animals on board for obvious of course reasons. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, kind of makes sense yeah yeah so i think the, the offload is pretty much done now i think all that will be happening on the aircraft now is probably the cleaners are on board yes cleaning yes. up the mess and you imagine on an a380 particularly the upper deck there's so many um cleaning aircrafts not what it used to be because on these really fancy business first class seats, and this aircraft has some fancy ones. It does. There's lots of pockets and niches yeah, and places yeah. to put things and lights. And places for things to fall down. Yeah, that's and right. Yeah. So, clean, so there's a lot of cleaners go on this aircraft to clean it. And they've got to clean the spa as well, haven't they? Oh, they've got the spa you know, and the shower It's unbelievable, clean, yeah. man, on board these yeah, things. Yeah. It's just, uh, I mean, I went on one in uh, at ILA in Berlin when they, were, when they were showing her off, and it was just... Yeah. It was phenomenal, man. I, yeah. You know, it, it was a spa. And, it, and of course, it's not just the cleaning, it's the restocking that has to go on. So yes, of even course. for the spa, yeah. you've got all the toiletries and, and, yeah, and the yeah. towels and yes. everything you get in a spa, yes. you get in first class here. So it all has to be loaded every time yeah. from yeah. scratch. It is incredible. It is incredible. And of course, you can't you can't remember that six hours after takeoff. You've got no. to get it right up no. front. No, and, and people paying a lot of money for uh, for their, um, they expect it to for, be right. They expect it to be 100% right. Absolutely. There are little pods and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. So that's interesting. Is that is that possibly a crew um, can over there that's sitting there on its own? That could be the uh, crew bags. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was just pointing out, the, the, the very important vehicle over there behind that is the crew bus. Yes, of course, of course. Um, has, that, has that always been the case? Because I noticed it during COVID they were they were uh, bussing the crews in and out just to avoid any contact. It, it depends on the, the airport. But in some airports, um, the, the crews are expected to walk through the passengers. Um, in others, like here, they 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 come on bus. I think yeah. I, I think that's a function. Just the, so it's another great thing about working for Emirates. It's another great thing about working for Emirates. You know, you get treatment like that. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, the, I think the, it's it's a. Uh, it's, it's a great lifestyle for the crew traveling yeah the from what they're, i'm they're hearing in today yeah they'll, yeah they'll well this guy's going to be in auckland next week you know yeah yeah, yeah. just um just beautiful man to visit all those all those places around the world yeah i think it's a you great know, life and be so well looked after as well yeah they you do know. they do get looked after yeah um yeah you know, the bus will drop them off at the hotel now stay the night in the hotel yeah yeah um get a good rest absolutely brilliant and away they go again get their shopping in so what sort of um, um, fuel um, tonnage are we talking about going on here? I actually uh, don't know the answer to that. Right, I should okay. know. Okay, um, okay. In excess of 100 tonnes, I would Oh, thought. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the, I think the, the, the total weight of the aircraft out today, because I had a quick look at the load sheet earlier, first draft load sheet, is 453 tons. Wow. So quite a bit under the maximum. Yeah, yeah, still um, a lot of it's, weight though, It's isn't still it? a, wow. a big aircraft, isn't it? Yeah. You see the refueling's going on now. Yes. So 
the um, the truck is kind of under the wing to the hydrant yeah. system. Yes. Um, now, obviously, on smaller aircraft, there'll be a bounce to come out and yes. you put straight into the aircraft. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you can't do that on these bigger aircraft. So Heathrow has a hydrant system. The the fuel truck just um, basically connects to the hydrant system and um, pumps it pumps straight into the wing. And what is also um, a really impressive number is where the fuel is piped from. It comes yeah. from a, a remote location, yeah. miles and miles away, into the big tanks here. Yeah. And then it and in through the underground system. Yeah. I yeah. mean that's a very complex system. The supply isn't? chain is amazing. That probably actually starts in a refinery in Forley yeah. near Southampton. Yeah. It comes by pipeline yeah. to here. There's there's holding points here and around the airport you see the the um, um, the holding tanks. Yes. And then yes. there's a hydrant system under the runways underground it's and it comes so up impressive. here. Yeah. It really is so and, impressive. And, and you know, I said at the beginning, it, it all looks calm, but there's an amazing infrastructure and community yes. of people making yes. this happen. Yes, yeah, most definitely. And we do hear uh, uh, um, great stories of people who've worked with Donata, of, of, uh, who come on the show, who, who say how, yeah. because really, as I was saying, the, these guys, you know, if you're working for an organization like this, you kind of want to at least appreciate aeroplanes, don't you? And engineering yeah. and all that kind of well, thing. Well, I, I like you, been brought up in aviation. My father was in aviation, so it's, it's kind of in my blood. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do anything else. Uh, yes. I've been with Donata 20 years and I love it. It's, um, um, it's a company which trains you well, which I think is really important. Yes. Um, it empowers you. Um, and and it, and it gives you an opportunity to. I, I, I just find working at an airport is such an exhilarating oh, uh, it, yeah, yeah, place yeah. to work. Yeah, oh, um, most definitely. Like I say, if you're into airplanes, uh, especially the big stuff like this, yeah. you know, you're yeah. getting up in the morning, oh, I'm going to be going and servicing at a, a 380. It's like, yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> but but it, that that is, I guess, the I guess your crew, your crews um, uh, uh, are just allotted. Yeah. Different assignments every day, so they yeah. might be on a, a three twenty in in half an hour, and Absolutely. then jumping on one of these. Yeah. So they'll, they'll come in with a eight hour roster. They'll be maybe operating this flight, and then they'll be moving on to another flight in a couple of hours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe do two or three aircraft during their shift. Yeah. Uh, and in between, go back have a coffee. Yes. Um, have a natter with their yeah, mates. Yeah. Have a natter with their mates. Yeah. Yeah. Watch watch ten minutes telly. And then back out again. Does um, it's not a twenty-four hour operation here at no, Heathrow. No, is Heath it? Heathrow has a curfew at eleven at night. Yes, which is not a strict curfew. Yeah. there are limit. You can get approval departure before eleven. But there's no scheduled departures after that. Yes. So sometimes if aircraft are running late, then Heathrow Airport will obviously accommodate that. But you don't yeah. plan to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the uh, I think the tower is manned twenty four seven. Yeah, it is. In case yeah. of any yeah. Uh, yeah. potential. And in fact, uh, our diverse. peak activity is is between eight and or between seven and, and ten at night. Oh, is it? Yeah. So Donata, we we're handling thirteen wide body departures from Terminal Three in that three hour period. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's a that's a great yeah. factoid. I like that. Yeah, including. Uh, it'll be four, including four of these beauties, the 880s. Yeah, yeah. And it might be more coming on soon. More coming on, Potentially. Yeah, yeah. Just well, Emirates has six a day. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And they are and they are more or less all, all, all full, are they, with passengers? Yeah. Yeah, it is crazy, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. People, people, people want to travel again. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's just innate in all of us. We, people said, oh, travel will stop now. People went, no, not... not not a bit. People want to travel. And I think so, one, once you, once people have started travelling, yeah, they, they used to go and see their relatives. They yes. used to going to, yeah, of to, course, to different countries. Of course, so you you can't go back from that. No, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And and of course now the great thing is that uh, is Dubai's a great sort of like um, halfway house for a lot yeah. of routes, isn't it? So yeah. you can visit Dubai and then go yeah. on to Auckland, it's, for example. Exactly, and it's perfectly geographically perfectly designed for that connections to the Eastern Hemisphere from the, yeah. the Indian subcontinent right through to the Far East to Australia, uh, Japan, Korea, etc. Yeah. So most of the, the 450 passengers who will be going on this, I would say probably, I don't know the exact number, but typically 70% of those will be connecting. 
Right. Which yeah. means, for example, when it comes to the, we'll see the baggage being loaded. That baggage being loaded has been separated into different cans. There's cans for um, the premium arriving passengers in Dubai, then economy passengers arriving in Dubai, but there'll be cans for passengers connecting. Yes, yes. Um, and some flights, are connect for connecting flights, may have their own can, where the whole, the whole of that can is for flights connecting to, let's say, Sydney. Yes, yes, that's um, very interesting. So there's a huge amount of work goes yeah. into preparing that loading to make the job easier at the other end. Absolutely. To make the yeah. connection easier. So you're not hand-picking through no, no, cans exactly. for, yeah. take his off, take yeah, that yeah. yeah, Well, it wouldn't yeah. work. No, no, it wouldn't. And, yeah. you, um, and you'd have massive delays as yeah. well. Yeah, and, yeah. And remember, what, the other thing is every one of those bags loaded on this aircraft has been X-ray screened. And it, and it has been matched on the automated reconciliation system to a passenger. Yes. So you have to have that 100% match of yeah. passenger to bags yeah. before they go on. So uh, it, it sort of looks calm, but there's a huge amount of yeah. checking, double checking process yeah. going on in the background. And the last thing you need is somebody checking their bag in and then not turning up on the flight. Because then you're in a. It does happen, of course it doesn't. <laughs> and that, yeah. That's yeah. what people need to appreciate in terms of aircraft delays. There's so yeah. many different variables with weather, um, yeah. a, a, a potentially uh, a, a technical issue yeah. with the aircraft, yeah. uh, which is very rare these days, I yeah. have to say. Um, but uh, but more often than not, it's it is it is can be just one passenger. Exactly. And, just, what, and uh, what happens is that the passenger, yeah, we have to offload the bags, and sometimes it's in the, the can nearest the door. Or it's Sometimes the one right at the back. Right yeah. at the back. Yes. And, and it can, you know, it takes, you've seen how the process of offloading those cans is. It, it has to be done properly at a yeah, certain yeah, speed. Yeah, it cannot be done, it. you can't do it hastily. And, we always, yeah. and you know, Jerry, we, we, we always say to our staff, safety first. Yes, We, we will not rush yeah. the yeah. turnaround of the aircraft. Yeah. Uh, at least the thing is that first. with that, with that uh, identifying um, the, the bag itself, you will know where that can is. Exactly. It's not like you've got to go no. and like, oh, where is it? We we'll keep looking no. for it. It's like, we know that it's too. We know exactly the where yeah. the bag is, yeah. which is yeah. great. Um, but of course, what happens if, if, if you end up being delayed, you may only be 12 minutes delayed because of that late passenger, but that may mean you miss a slot. Yeah, exactly. Particularly yeah. at a busy airport like Heathrow. Yes. Missing a slot means that 12 minutes can become yeah. 50 minutes. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, so that's what, you know, I'd always urge passengers to think about when they're you know, getting to the gate. Yes, most time. definitely. Most Just definitely. one other thing to point out, Jerry. The, this particular load, is, you see two loaders. There's one, yes. one at the front, one at the back of the Right, aircraft. I got you, yeah. This loader here um, is actually an electric one. So we're is trying as much as possible wow. to move towards electric vehicles rather than diesel. Uh, in fact, you see a little sign that says Dark Donata Rhino. I've got it. I've um, got it. Yeah, so we're, we're very proud that, you know, and pretty much most of the, the capex that we're investing now is in electric vehicles. And in fact, the, 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 the electric vehicles which will bring the, the baggage, um, the little tractors, they're all electric as yeah. well. I, I mean, it's a, it's a natural progression, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, most, yeah. most airfields are now, are now doing it. Yeah. Um, they do have the electric tugs here with the, the lift and yeah. push tugs, yeah. um, the little ones for the 320s. Yeah. But I, I would imagine looking at that and the fact that that is electrical, uh, that's got as much torque in it and power oh, to be able to, 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 to replace that in terms of like the... the, in, the the power yeah. unit itself. Yeah. I, I can I can imagine big tugs like that becoming time, electrified. Yeah. And, and as the technology improves, ultimately um, the the pushbacks will be um, electric as well. Yeah. So this yeah. shop pushback here, which is going to push back the aircraft, that's um, that's seventy tons. That's a big old lump. It's a, isn't it? it's a, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. You know, and and it has ballast it. Yes, and the reason it right. has ballast is because if you go back to your GCSE physics, that's, that's got to push a vehicle or an, uh, you know, uh, uh, an aircraft uh, which can be up to 580 tons. Exactly. So it needs to have mass. the same amount of uh, mass. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and really, it, all it is is, is, uh, is getting it moving. 
that initial it's momentum. once it's moving All momentum. then it's yeah, yeah. then it's a, then, yeah. then you can back off so to yeah, speak that's but, right. yeah. But, yeah. but yeah I mean just getting it moving from yeah. especially if it's on a bit of an incline yeah. you know uh, which yeah. you do see at airfields as I well know. I know fully not so much at Heathrow but there are stands at certain airports around the world yeah, where, which that are, have real inclines yeah. 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 yeah yeah and some there are and again not so much at Heathrow but there are stands where you you have to kind of maneuver on the pushback yeah. and it's quite, yeah. quite an art. Well the great thing is that we, we've got a position uh, opposite the entry point to 27 right here and uh, if, they're, if, they're, if they're sitting waiting um, uh, for, their, yeah. for their clearance to, to turn onto the runway there is a ramp so they have to power up the aircraft yeah. to get up onto that yeah. top ramp, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is, you know, I mean, we love yeah. the sound of it. <laughs> like when he when he was pulling in here, man, it was just oh, I know. the sound was I just know. absolutely. You fantastic. realize how big this aircraft is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it is just amazing. Yeah. And this yeah. one today is sporting uh, the Rolls Royce engine. Yep. Um, notable uh, by its uh, titanium fan blades, because of course the General Electric one. Uh, runs the carbon blade. Right. Okay. So the uh, yeah. so the Emirates use two different engine yeah. types. The yeah. GE um, yeah. GP seventy two hundred, I think it is. General Electric slash Pratt yeah. Pratt and Whitney, yeah. and these are just pure Rolls Royce. So we've got. So we're starting the onload now. So everyone, everything's off the aircraft. Yep. We're now starting the onload. So this this is a cargo truck it's come from the other side of the airfield you can see a second cargo truck yeah. had to be loaded at the rear um the the marsha went it's just i don't think we got it on shot but just reversing now look whenever the vehicle is reversing there's always somebody guiding it always somebody guiding that safety first yeah like absolutely safety. yeah yeah so he's bringing the the truck back next to the loader So that they can basically connect the truck to the loader, and then it, it's, it, it, it electricity does the rest. And again, inside inside the truck, casters inside the truck. Yeah, casters so, inside the truck, so it's an easy push off. Yeah. Again, I'm not sure you saw, but that that there were security seals there. So as the, the truck was moving, it's completely it's completely sealed off, so that nobody can can access it at all. And I see. It has been yep. accessed. They would know because of the security seals. What are the inspection uh, windows for there then? Um, that uh, well, it, it's it's so you can look in and just so anyone can see what's in there. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just, it's just literally a visual yeah. inspection. Yeah, yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this has come from one of your many uh, cargo. Um, yeah. So it's come from one of the eight facilities which are on the. Um, south side of the field yes um just the other side of the i think it's the a30 isn't it yes yeah. yes yes yeah uh, opposite the other side of the bread bin isn't it that's right yeah yeah so we so, employ another 700 people wow. in those cargo really facilities. yeah they're building up the cargo breaking it down yeah and of course through through the pandemic that was oh. that was kind of the lifeline of the country i bet it was manic over there wasn't it yeah we were bringing in all sorts of, we were bringing in um, defibrillators, we were bringing in all sorts of medical equipment um, and then of course we started with, with, the, with um, um, all the, um, the pharmaceutical, with the PPE, yes. masks, yeah, 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 then thankfully yeah. we started to carry the, the, the vaccines and I think our, our staff got a lot of um, satisfaction from knowing oh, the, kind of the role they played in Most keeping definitely. the country going. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and at the like, same time, they had a, a job themselves. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, they yeah. were keeping going. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know. And I think people, I think people really appreciated air cargo. People don't see air cargo. No, it's they kind don't. Of hidden. They don't. They during don't. the pandemic, people came yeah. to really appreciate it. Yeah. See, I mean, see the first can coming yeah. out. So they'll put two cans on the lower deck loader, and then stand by, stand by. What's that, mate? Sorry. Uh, are we able to wrap at all? It's just Imran told me we're not going to be able to capture the pushback. It's are we not? It's going to be another hour at least. Uh, okay. And with the shift change, they won't be able to. Oh, yeah, it's, okay. It's oh. Because be, I thought as well it would be fairly quick, but it's going to be another hour. Sound okay? Oh. With a shift turnaround and he throw it said. I probably need to yeah. go soon. Is actually. it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I've actually got to go soon anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, let's just uh, let's wander over there and do a piece of the sticks then. 
Okay, we're going to wrap. Um, right, should we go back to the car? Yeah, of course. Do you want me okay. to come in? No, you're fine, no, mate. Okay. Listen, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Thank you for everything you've said and all, all the information that you've given us. And uh, we'll hopefully see you again yeah, soon brilliant. Thanks, on Jerry. another show. Can I grab that? Yeah, of course. Thank yeah. you, sir. All the very best. Thanks, Jerry. Take care. Speak soon. Cheers, then. Bye. See you. Thanks, guys. Right, okay. Oh, chilling. Do you copy? We got a rat, mate. Yeah. No. Good. Yeah, I'm, bit, I'm a little bit. It's a bit of a shame that we can't get the push. And I thought that was the whole thing that we were going to do. Yeah, the whole turnaround. That's the way we've. Um, that's the way we've uh, um, advertised it, so to speak. You know, um, it was like you know, full turnaround and departure. You captured some solid. Interview, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that landing, that was my Yeah, no, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. Hey okay, take care. All the yeah, best. Thanks. Okay. Uh, right. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> it's like being. It's like being. Um, Was it not? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just go and get it. We'll go and film it departing somewhere else. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, we'll go and get the departure out on... Um, where's it going to be out of? It's going to be out... Oh, it's going out of... It's going out 2.7 left, isn't it? It's going out 2.7 left, isn't it? Yeah. We'll go two seven left. Oh, that's a shame. Okay. Average delay is an hour on departure. Right, folks, um, we will, um, I just got to say a big shout out to the Renaissance, you say. You all right, mate? You what, mate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, GP, just let me do a link. Just let, let me just do a close out here. Yeah, cheers, yeah, mate. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay, right, I'm just gonna disconnect those for now. I'm just gonna take that off of there. Put that down there like that. Alrighty, alright, we're all good. Everything okay? Everything okay? Oh dear, never mind. <laughs> okay, folks, we're off. Um, we are, what we are going to plan to do, if we can, is we're going to catch this aircraft going out from another location uh, outside the airfield. Um, big shout out to Ryan. Thank you, Ryan, sir. Thank you. You're a star, mate. Uh, Imran. Thank you. Omar. Thank you. Guys, come in and say, come in. You know, these are the guys that helped us out. Um, thank you very much indeed. We will catch this aircraft going out um, in uh, probably about an hour's time, I'd imagine. Maybe a little bit longer. I understand there are some delays on departures. There are around about an hour on delays at the moment. So, uh, we got to get back, break everything down, and we will see you uh, in a short while, and we'll let you know when we're going to be live. Okay, GP, you can wrap that. Thank you.